For those of you who are single right now, does it feel like you might be stuck that way forever? If you've had a really hard time dating, you might wonder if loneliness is a way of life for the rest of your life. Everyone today seems to think that committed relationships are dead, but check out this shocking statistic. According to Pew Research, roughly 80 to 90% of women are at least open to the idea of a long-term committed relationship, with most women preferring it, and 98% of women say that they prefer a committed partner for sex to 2% who prefer hookups. Now, I'm going to reveal the truth in this video about how men, yes, men, can step up to build a committed relationship with a devoted woman, no matter what the internet says is possible. I am Adam Lane Smith, the attachment specialist, and I am going to show you how to build better relationships. Now, shout out to my members who support this channel. Thank you so much for having my back. I will have yours. And all you new people who are coming in today to join us, welcome and buckle up. This is going to be a bumpy ride today. So why does it feel like romance is dead? Many blame social media or promiscuity or Tinder or the internet or all women in general. But the blunt and ugly truth is that modern men have absolutely no idea what women want or how to provide it. And I'm going to show you in this video so it's no longer a mystery. So let's dive right in and fix romance together. So what the hell do women actually want? And why don't men seem to know any longer what it is or how to provide it? Women want one thing, to feel safe. And I mean in every sense. Yes, they want to feel physically safe. Yes, they want to feel protected from predators, from you if you're violent. Yes, they want to feel safe. But they want to feel secure. They want to feel connected in relationships that aren't going to break up and leave them hanging. They want to feel secure in a bond with you where they won't be replaced instantly. They want to feel secure with you where you will take care of their needs as they give themselves to take care of your needs. This is called feminine energy to give, to nurture. Women function best when they feel safe because they can stop putting energy into trying to be safe and they can give all of that energy away to the people who love them and the people they love. Women make the best mothers when they have an amazing husband who is taking care of safety and security. So they don't have to focus on that. They can give themselves to their family. Women desire safety and security from men. It's the number one thing we need to provide. But this can only happen when they are shielded from all types of danger. Masculine energy then is about protecting and providing and shielding. That is masculine on the outside. I say this, men build structures and then women fill those structures. Men build walls so that women can be safe. And then within those walls, they create a thriving, loving home. That's what this is about, you guys. Men need to provide all of that safety and stability so women don't have to waste their energy doing it. Now, can women provide safety? They can. Can women go out and provide resources? They can. Can women go out and with a gun into the forest and hunt and get their own food and fight off raiders from the farm? They can, but it's a waste. You are prioritizing the wrong activities for somebody who is not fitted into that role. Men are fitted biologically and evolution-wise into those roles of providing and protecting. It's not that women can't or shouldn't be allowed to. I'm not even saying that, but it's a waste because women have so much feminine energy to give. It is phenomenal and it is irreplaceable because as women can step up and serve in the role of men, men cannot do the opposite. So if romance seems dead. Let me ask you, are men building safe structures around women anymore? Here's an example. I had a female client. Let's call her Sarah. She came into my coaching practice desperately unhappy. She had a husband and she had three children and he was not fulfilling his role. He would go to work, but not the kind of work that would actually make much money. He was fulfilling what they call a passion job, almost no money at all and defending himself doing so. 
right? And he only worked about four hours a day at this job, but it was so fulfilling for him. So she had to go pull eight hour shifts in a job she hated. She also had to come home and take care of those children, by the way, and do all of those other pieces. She had to nurture those. He abandoned his role and she had to step into the masculine role. So when it came to the home, she was also in her masculine role, telling people what to do, barking orders, trying to direct, trying to protect, trying to provide. And she resented him every step of the way. Did you know recent research from Forbes magazine found, and they, they conducted a survey of women in corporate executive positions and asked them, how many of you would prefer to stay at home if you could? 84% of women in executive roles said they wished their male partner made enough for them to stay at home. 65% of them actively resented their male partner for not making enough for them to stay at home. Are men building structures anymore to provide those masculine needs and safety and resources for women? There's a lot of reasons that men are held back, but are they doing it? No. Now, we have a generation of women who've been raised by two generations of women now who are telling their daughters... That weak men is the normal. That men will fail them. Go get a career. Do not focus on marriage. Do not focus on love because they will abandon you and you will have to become the man anyway. So just go do that and have kids when you're 35 because you will never be safe otherwise. They're also telling their daughters that men who appear strong are actually dangerous because many of these older women experienced a lot of harm at the hands of men who seemed strong because they held power, but they were really weak in character. We also have generations of men now, today, raised by two generations who were sick of men and who felt failed by men. Men today are afraid to be men. We're told that masculinity is toxic. So a lot of men try to be nice boys or bad boys, but they're still boys. The difference between men and boys, manhood, masculinity, is the embracing of responsibility. That's manhood. Nice boys try to earn through approval, but they don't have responsibility. They try to get. Bad boys reject all responsibility and accountability. Men embrace responsibility, not as slaves. But because that's what manhood is for, what we biologically evolved for, you guys, to provide and protect. It's in our DNA. Women today do not feel safe. So they protect themselves. They defend. They play survival games. I am not justifying the terrible behavior that some, some women get up to in our modern world. Not at all. But romance is dying. It's not dead, but it's hiding under a rock and bleeding. And it's only going to get better when men step into that role and protect and provide again. So if you are a man who is stuck in your dating life, and the problem is that you cannot find someone to fully authentically connect with, it could be because you are not being perceived as being masculine enough. But you can change that. I'm going to show you how. Ladies who are watching this, and I know that you are, thank you. What is your opinion of men who force you to be in your masculine energy? Right? There's a giant TikTok trend going on about this pretty much all the time. Please shout out your feelings in the comments and make your voices heard because I want to know if this is a driving force behind why you don't trust men. Now, I told you at the beginning of this video that we're going to fix romance, and I meant it. So to bring back romance and committed relationships... Men and women must fix this imbalance that's happening. And in this case, I'm calling specifically on my fellow men to embrace your masculine energy so as to increase the stability and safety in our world first. Balancing the masculine and the feminine energy. It's not about tyranny. It's not about control. It's about calm protection and stability so that women can be nurturing and warm instead of defensive and cold. If you make them be defective men, they do not need a man. This is not 
saying that women get to do whatever they want and men have to just shut up, put up with it. No, I know men watching this may feel that way. You probably have other people shouting at you saying, step up, be a man, take on her, you know, whatever problems, it's fine. No, be a masculine man, then attract a feminine woman. It has to go that way. A feminine woman will not take pity on you and then try to help you be a masculine man. That's the friend zone approach, you guys. They, they are not going to be attracted. I am calling on men to start this process. Safety and stability must be established first. This is what you are going to do. So let's talk about what that looks like. I want to show you some examples of what stepping into your masculine energy and providing safety and stability actually looks like. It is not you handing her a thousand dollars on your first date, by the way, just to show that you're amazing. No, I'm going to show you through some examples characters maybe from movies or shows and real life scenarios exactly what this needs to look like so here's how a masculine man presents in early dating number one be very clear about what you're looking for right even on your dating bio i recommend that men look at your dating bio and state very clearly what you're looking for and what you want in a partner and the characteristics especially that you're looking for be very clear any warm body will do, or just looking for a good time, or look at the fun I will show you. This is not masculine. This is dancing around for her attention. Not masculine. Early dating? Be clear. When I met my wife for the first time, I told her, look, I'm not here to play games. I want to find a woman who wants to have a family, is going to be this religion, this belief, is going to marry me and do this kind of connection and, and, and have this relationship. This is what I want. Do you want that too? And her eyes lit up and she said, no man has ever had the guts to tell me that right up front. Yes, that is what I want. Are you legit? <laughs> that's, that's what she had. And it's true. That's a fair question because most men don't have the guts except fake men who dangle that to try to play games. So if you are a man who shows up early in dating and says, this is what I want. This is what I expect. This is what I will provide. This is what I want in a relationship. Do you want that too? No more games. Very clear. She can say yes or no. She knows what your expectations are. She doesn't have to play a game with you. She doesn't have to guess what you're trying to get out of her. When you make her safe in this early dating process, she can start trusting you pretty quick. Now, in a long-term relationship, I really like this movie, Big Fat Greek Wedding. It's a great film, but I love the character of Ian because in many ways, he is very, interestingly, very masculine. He's very clear and transparent about what he wants and what he doesn't want long-term in the relationship. He calls her out on problems. He mentions things to her family. He is very clear about who he is, even if they don't like it. In fact, this is part of the reason she can start trusting him and opening up to him. She's able to open up and share things with him. He could say, yeah, that's weird, but okay, I don't care. He doesn't say, well, it's probably fine. He doesn't, oh no, it's totally great. Everything's good. No, he's calm. He tells her how it is. Then they face challenges and he says, we're going to get through this. I love that movie. You wouldn't look at him and say, oh, it's a masculine man. But he actually prevents, presents as very safe and masculine. That's why their resonance, their, their romance seems to resonate with us, the audience. Now, a masculine man also responds well to challenges from fear and instability. A bad example of this, and I love the film, is the movie Die Hard right? Bruce Willis in that film, he responds terribly to his ex-wife. When he comes to visit her at the beginning of the film, he's calm, he's relaxed, he's talking with her, and you can see through her body language, she is so calm and ready. She's in her office, he's standing in the bathroom, they're flirting, and the moment he remembers, oh, her name changed, and she was signing my check. I don't like that she changed her name and signs checks still. And he says, bet you didn't miss my name though when you were signing the checks. You can see how she completely changes. I love that actress. She did a great job showing the instant he creates unsafety for her. He makes it an unstable situation. She shuts down. It's an excellent scene. The opposite 
is to take on those challenges and say, you know what? Can we talk about this thing? It bothered me. Tell me your side. No, I want to hear you. Talk to me about it. Emotional non-reactivity is a big skill for masculine men responding to fear and say, and, and instability, emotional non-reactivity, not that you don't have feelings or you shut down her feelings or you tell her she's stupid, but you don't respond to her fear. You say, okay, I understand. I don't feel that way. Here's what we're going to do about it. You provide that consistency and safety. This is the same thing you do during a crisis to keep her stable and secure. She looks at you. Are we in danger? Are we going to die? My wife does this when there's a crisis. There's a huge news story. Something horrible has happened. She looks at me and she tells me about it. Calm face. I talked about this in my earlier video. Three secrets I keep from my wife. Calm face. Inside, I might be going, I don't know what we're going to do. I better make some phone calls. But outside, I say, you know what? I get why you're stressed. It hasn't hit us. We've got plenty of resources. We're safe. Let's not worry about it. Let me go make some phone calls. Let me learn some things. We're going to be fine. We've got everything handled. I'm not lying. The point is not to lie. It's not to conceal until you're bankrupt and now you have to tell her, oh, we're all going to die. The point is to be masculine so that she feels safe. Now, what this does is make a woman say, he's handling the outside. He's handling the outside and he's telling me we're okay. Maybe it's not as bad as I thought. Maybe we're okay. She can actually have emotional responses. Women learn and, and grow and test and, and do all of these things through their feelings. Their feelings are, can be amazing, but sometimes they're also wrong. Sometimes they're great and sometimes they're wrong. They shouldn't be ignored, but they can test with you, right? They also need to feel safe in dating. If they know what you want and they know that they can open up and they can connect, they can give that feminine. And when they can give that feminine, they respond by becoming nurturing and warm and bonding with you. Everything you're looking for in a woman is the feminine energy. That benefit to your life, you put in the hard labor, but you see her thriving. You see her children, your, your children thriving under her care. You come home and you get the benefit of that warmth and comfort on your aching mind and body. It is supposed to work in complement together. But it can't work if women don't feel safe because there's two masculine energies in the home and you both become exhausted and she resents you for it because she's not meant to do that. Yeah, in a pinch, they can. Women can, but they shouldn't have to because they're meant for more, not less, more. Men need to step up first. That's why. We have to create safety and stability. And then women bring in immense support. Ladies, for example, if this feels like the right start for you and this approach would bring you into your feminine energy, please blow up the comment section right now with support so that men see that you're just waiting on them to start this. I would love for men to hear this and not say the same old thing of women are not going to respond. They say what they want, but they're just going to hurt you. Why should men have to do this first? Ladies, please, please blow up the comment section right now if this would help. So the secret here that I want to make non-secret is that romance springs from the balance of masculine and feminine energy, from low stress and authentic connection. When you have those things and you make a woman feel safe and loved, she can respond with real romance and love. If you guys are looking for that, you've got to get those women out of their masculine. You can only do that by being masculine and then inviting them under the shelter that you have built. So one more time, why is romance dying? I hope you can answer this question by now. Romance is dying because masculinity is dying. They are tied together and femininity is dying. We have a world where women have to be masculine to protect themselves and feel safe and where men feel pointless. This imbalance is killing us and romance. Romance is, is just a casualty along the way. So we need to fix that balance with men stepping into their masculine. Without you, men stepping into your masculine, she cannot be in her feminine and romance will stay dead. Remember I said earlier, men build structures. Women fill structures. Men, you must build structures. Even if it's four poles and a ceiling, to shelter her under 
so that she is at least safe. That is building a structure. Step fully into your masculine self and embody it with her. And she will start to crave a romantic connection with you, a long-term committed bond. This is how you build a relationship that is balanced and devoted. She can be fully into her feminine self while you embrace your masculine self. And together you can build a fulfilling connection that grows for you over time. This will be a relationship where you're confident and you're focused on achieving your mission. And she's able to embrace her role as a nurturing woman for you and your family. That's what marriage is meant to be. That's what romance is meant to lead to. So if you are challenged by stepping into your masculine, and a lot of men today are, or if you feel that there's a block holding you back, please reach out. I offer personal coaching that I can help you overcome those mental obstacles that are stopping you from opening up, from connecting, from trusting, from sharing and expressing. I can show you how to do that with my coaching. I will help you step into your authentic self to then offer that authentic self to other people. I am Adam Lane Smith, the attachment specialist. I am here to help and I'm ready to do so. So go back first right now and watch my earlier video called Three Secrets I Keep From My Wife to see how a masculine man protects his wife, even from himself. I'll see you there.